You're listening to The Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight I've got a uh, really uh, scary broadcast for you. And uh, I hope you're, uh, hope you're ready to hear this. I was, uh, I was a great admirer <laughs> of, of the United States. I still am. The proper government under constitutional law. But you see, when I was a young man, um, I believed, like a lot of people do today, that our government could do no wrong. And I wanted to serve the government all my life. So I joined the Air Force first, served in the Strategic Air Command, had a secret clearance, worked on B-52 bombers, KC-134 Five air, that's KT-135 aircraft and Minuteman missiles. Uh, received a letter of commendation from my commanding officer. I'd always wanted to be in the Navy. So when I left the Air Force, I was in the Air Force Reserve for a certain period of time. Then I decided uh, I'm going in the Navy. The reason I had gone in the Air Force to begin with was that uh, all through my childhood and teen years, I had suffered from chronic motion sickness, which meant that if I got on anything that moved, I got deathly sick, really ill. I mean, like, please kill me, you know, that kind of illness. Chronic motion sickness. It's the worst thing that you can ever get. It makes you want to die. But, you know, after the Air Force, I still wanted to go in the Navy, and I said, to hell with it. I've got to do this. I have this tremendous love of the ocean and ships and the tradition of the Navy, and I'm going to do it. So I did it. I've got to tell you, folks, that when I first went in the Navy, it was still like it always traditionally had been, and I loved it, loved every single second of it, every moment. I loved every ceremony, I loved every rule, every regulation, I, I loved it. It was just, it was me. And I was serving my country, and that was the greatest thing. While I was in there, I learned things and developed friendships and uh, was assigned to different commands. I served in Vietnam as a patrol boat captain, as most of you already know. I was awarded medals with the V for valor. I made my peace with God. <laughs> I knew that I could die at any moment, and uh, I made my peace. I'm not afraid of death. The United States government has recognized that I'm a brave man. Twice, as a matter of fact. I also learned that most people who go into military service do it because they want to serve their country. They also want to prove something to themselves. A lot of young men want to prove that, they're, that they are men. They want some kind of verification of that. I certainly did. Most young men do. We're seeking ourselves. The most honorable, most truthful, best men that I've ever met in my life, I met in the military service, both in the Air Force and the Navy. But the best men I've ever known in my life were in the United States Navy, officers and enlisted. When I served on the staff, the Commander-in-Chief of the United States Pacific Fleet, I became friends with several well, during my entire career in the military, both in the Air Force and the Navy, I became friends with several really good officers. The best officer that I ever became friends with was Donald DeGrieff. And at the time that I was assigned to Sinkpack Fleet, Donald DeGrieff was a lieutenant. 
in the United States Navy, which is the same as a captain in the Army or the Marine Corps. While he was there, he earned the rank of lieutenant commander. Well, he went on to command uh, several different ships and vessels and commands and things, and he retired as a captain. He was passed over for admiral because he was a Christian. That's right, he was passed over for admiral, for the rank of admiral, because he was a Christian. <laughs> it's the truth, folks. I love that man. He was a great friend. I would have followed him into the gates of hell without question. He was a good personal friend. He was probably the best officer that I've ever known. Now, the reason I'm telling you these things is because you're going to hear something that's going to cause all of these things to come into question. And I'm going to tell you right now that with these men that you're going to hear about, it's not in question because they don't know how they're being used. They operate on faith. They are patriots. They really are patriots, ladies and gentlemen. They do not question or believe that their superior officers or the United States of America would misuse them, just like I never believed it until I was assigned to the intelligence briefing team of the commander-in-chief of the Pacific Fleet and discovered what was really going on. If I had never been assigned there, I never would be doing this. I would have served out. I would have retired in the United States Navy, probably. And I would probably right now be enjoying my retirement check, wondering what the hell's happening to my wonderful country that I spent my life protecting. I hope you're understanding what I am saying to you. Uh, these men, like your local police officers, and like the agents of the Federal Bureau of Investigation and the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, and uh, your local mayor, even, and your state governor, and your state legislatures, don't know the law, even if they're lawyers. They probably have never read the Constitution, don't know what it says, wouldn't know when they're being used unlawfully and unconstitutionally. And all of these things are what have helped lead us down the hill on the roller coaster into the oblivion that we find ourselves in now. The imminent destruction of the greatest nation that's ever existed on the face of this earth, the United States of America, is imminent. We're faced with a civil war in our immediate future because of these things. So don't believe that these individual men who really believe that they're serving their country are the enemy. You may find that they are the enemy on some future battlefield if we cannot re-educate them to understand what they're doing wrong. And in that case, we'll have to kill them if we can, or be killed by them. I've also included in these short excerpts some of the things that the militias of America need to know. Need to know. It's just a short excerpt. I'm going to play it. It's from a videotape called United States Navy Seals in Harm's Way. Some of you may have seen it. But if you're like most Americans, you sat there brain dead and watched it without ever understanding the tremendous problems that confront us in this video. This is hard news. And I've just taken excerpts throughout the video. So you need to get a hold of this video. It's called United States Navy Seals in Harm's Way. Or watch for it on the Discovery Channel or on PBS or any of the other channels that show these kinds of videos. You need to watch it. You need to tape record it. 
if you belong to a militia unit, you need to tape record it, and your entire militia unit needs to study it thoroughly. Now, I'm going to say this one more time. The philosophy behind this, the subversion of the Constitution behind this, the people who are responsible for deciding the policy whereby the United States Navy SEALs will be de de trained and deployed, the officers who carry out these orders without question, even though they are sworn to protect and defend the Constitution for the United States of America, those are the enemies, not the individual United States Navy SEALs who join the SEAL teams to serve their country and believe wholeheartedly in their heart and their mind that they are being sent out by their country to do the right thing. They've never read the Constitution. They don't know what it says. They don't understand that they are being misused through their own patriotism to do things that are not patriotic whatsoever. Make sure that you understand this and that you make every effort to educate to get the truth to every single member of our United States military forces state military forces all the time so that they can wake up because at some future date they're gonna have to make a choice if the choice is that they're on the battlefield facing us members of the militia who are dedicated to the restoration of constitutional Republican government, even though they may believe that they are serving that Constitution, there may come a day when we may have to kill them. And in that case, forget everything I've said and to do it as quickly, as thoroughly, and as efficiently as you possibly can, and don't make them suffer. close attention folks and uh, every once in a while I'm going to break in and call your attention to something that I feel you might uh, overlook without that kind of uh, oversight so listen very carefully 
And I'm going to break in every once in a while. I'm going to call your attention to something that I really believe is extremely important. On the eve of the new millennium, international terrorism, civil and economic chaos, and the growing availability of weapons of mass destruction present an endless array of threats that the world's national security concerns could not have predicted even as recently as the end of the Cold War. Notice, folks, that they are talking about the end of the millennium. This tape was made before the year 2000, before January 1st, 2000. It was shown on television several times. I don't know how I missed it, but I did. And uh, they're trying to build you up into this millennium fever. Also, notice that they did not say the security forces of the United States but the world security forces and that's even going to come home to you more thoroughly as uh, as this goes on one unit experience in unconventional special operations missions is the u.s navy seals classified maritime special operations unit trained to respond to conflicts around the globe. Today's threats to world peace have reinforced the demand for a rapid, smaller military response to situations where a full-scale military intervention is not practical. Notice, folks, they did not say today's threats to the United States of America. That was not mentioned. They said today's threats to world peace. You see, the United States military, as I've told you for many years, does not work for the United States of America. It works directly for the United Nations. The United Nations became the world government when it was formed in 1945, and the United States Senate ratified the United Nations Participation Act, and it was signed by President Truman. These situations are known as conflicts other than war. Conflicts other than war, ladies and gentlemen, mean unconstitutional, unlawful military actions. For the first time, cameras were allowed into the secretive world of the U.S. Navy SEAL teams. Despite restrictions on filming certain classified subjects, the events pictured here are actual training and military operations never before seen by the public. With a muster of less than 2,500 men, the U.S. Navy SEALs is the smallest American special operations combat force. We are preparing men to go into harm's way and defend freedom. They operate in austere conditions with a small number of men in very demanding and highly classified missions. And in combat, there's winners and there's losers. The difference between combat and its sports is they bury the guy who comes in second place. Notice, ladies and gentlemen, that they said the SEALs are trained to go out and defend freedom. What you're going to hear in this rest of the videotape, and what you've already heard, uh, contradicts that completely. has nothing to do with freedom whatsoever. You can see the movement as far as the teams going from not only guerrilla warfare, going into, I don't want to say so much of a conventional warfare, but more of an urban warfare. And that's the key. What you actually see on the video is the SEAL teams training to take positions and to kill people in American cities, American cities, American cities, American cities. And they've been practicing, practicing this all over the United States of America. We've done many shows on it. We've done, uh, in fact, the hour of the time was the first broadcast in the entire world that revealed that the United States military was conducting these urban warfare exercises in American cities. Warfare is the new battleground for low-intensity conflicts. Large platoon maneuvers are a different approach for SEAL teams used to operating in squads of eight men or less. Mock 
top urban settings like this one allow 16 and 18 man seal platoons to practice new tactics in settings far different from the jungles of Vietnam or the deserts of the Gulf War. He's talking about American cities. Smaller geopolitical war zones are battlefields where enforcing the peace has become as deadly as fighting a war. Notice he said enforcing the peace. Enforce, since when does the United States military enforce the peace anywhere? Since when? That is not the mission of the military of the United States of America. Remember what we taught you about democracy? Remember that we taught you that uh, both Marx and Lenin said that democracy was indispensable to socialism? That the end goal of socialism is communism? and that the definition of peace is the elimination of all opposition to socialism. And here we have United States Navy SEALs dedicated to keeping the peace. Normally when SEALs go in harm's way, we go in little bitty bunches, okay? One man's got to eliminate a lot of people in a very short period of time. Combine the whole squad doing that, giving no quarter. That's how you survive. That's how you stay alive in our day. That means once a SEAL team is deployed against you, they will not take prisoners. They will not leave any single person alive. And you will hear this reinforced later in this broadcast on this tape. This is the M14 battle rifle. It's chambered for the 762 by 51 NATO cartridge. This is not a puny M16. This is a full-size 30 caliber battle rifle employed by the Navy SEAL teams. Other services use this weapon as a sniper rifle, and we use it that way too. But we also carry it on an individual basis out in the field. This is a very robust rifle, very accurate out to long ranges, beyond 800 yards. If you have to shoot men that are behind emplacements, cover, this is the rifle you want to do it with. It penetrates the brush. It goes through bunkers. It goes through branches, through walls, through automobile sheet metal and glass. It also works extremely well in adverse conditions, arctic conditions. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, Chief, but I prefer the 375 H and H Magnum. If a 308 will do all those things that you say, what will a 375 H and H Magnum do? Even better than that, what will a 375 H and H Magnum Wildcat do? Think about that, folks. One of the biggest activities that our special operators are involved in is counter-drug operations. This is a major activity for the SEALs as well. The Navy SEALs are also out there working in the regions supported by the special boat units as well as the patrol coastals, which are really not craft but ship. It's a 171-foot ship that is now a favorite of those law enforcement agencies that are involved in counter-drug operations so that you typically see Navy SEALs supporting the work of the patrol coastals in the Caribbean and uh, of course they're also in the Persian Gulf. Powerful narco-terrorist organizations have created political instability in their own countries and radically altered the perception of what constitutes a threat to U.S. national interests. Narco-terrorist organizations? A threat to U.S. national interests? Are you trying to tell me, ladies and gentlemen, that some pre-high school educated drug lord in Colombia can't be taken out? Are you trying to tell me that law enforcement, civilian law enforcement, can't properly deal with hoodlums? This sounds like something like a chapter. The new enemy right out of guess what? Guess what, ladies and gentlemen? What was it that was written about creating 
new enemies for the new world order. Ah, oh, I think it was the report from Iron Mountain. Read it. All this will begin to make sense to you. And don't believe for one instant that somebody wrote this as a paper for college or as a joke or as some kind of, uh, of, uh, of uh, satire on our modern society. That's total bullshit. And once you read it, and once you've looked around and seen what's been happening since it is purported to have been written in 1966, you'll understand that it's the real thing. Special boat squadrons deploy throughout the world and play a major role in the supporting and training of anti-drug forces in Central and South America. The Hurricane-class coastal patrol craft is the first designed for Navy special warfare use. With two 25mm guns, Stinger anti-aircraft missiles, and other weapons, it carries enough firepower for enforcing counter-drug operations along coastal waters. A range of 2,000 miles and a cruising speed of 12 knots makes its primary tasks coastal patrol and supporting SEAL units. This is total bullshit, folks. They're not talking about coastal waters. They're talking about outside the 12-mile limits in international waters where no nation has any kind of jurisdiction whatsoever. The United States SEAL teams, the United States Navy with these coastal patrol boats are actually breaking the law by stopping vessels and sinking vessels. In fact, in this videotape, you see them with all of the armaments on these ships sinking other ships, blowing them out of the water, destroying them. But you don't see it in the New York Times. You don't see it in the Dallas Morning News. You don't see it in the Arizona Repulsive. You don't see it in the L.A. Times. And you never will. You don't see it on the Communist News Networks either. U.S. Navy SEALs and special boat units are training other nations to fight a counter-drug war in the Amazon River basins of South America. For secret intelligence operations with no clear battle lines, SEALs and the special boat units have developed into an effective, independent, river-wing counter-drug force. This is one of the missions of the so-called Groundwater Navy. Right now, the world situation is changing, and our relationship with the third world is evolving. And one of the things that we do as Naval Special Warfare Forces is represent the military, the small people with only the big footprint. So we're not really doing anything different to adjust to the new world order. I think that the new world order is making uh, making us a more valuable resource than we were before because we focus more on the things that we're trying to do. New world order. I'm going to rewind the tape so that you can hear that. How many of you have written me and phoned me and told me that there is no new world order? That that's, uh, that's some invention. There is a new world order. It's one world government. It's in place. The military forces of the United States of America are now functioning as the police force for the New World Order. I want you to hear that again for all of those of you who say there's no New World Order. Get the videotape because this is a United States Navy Admiral. That's right. A United States Navy Admiral who is saying this. Listen carefully. The Amazon River Basins of South America. For secret intelligence operations with no clear battle lines, SEALs and the special boat units have developed into an effective, independent, riverine counter-drug force. This is one of the missions of the so-called Groundwater Navy. Right now, the world situation is changing, and our relationship with the third world is evolving. And one of the things that we do as Naval Special Warfare Forces is represent the military and the small people with a Right now, the world situation is changing, and our relationship with the third world is evolving. And one of the things that we do as Naval Special Warfare Forces is represent the military with small people with only the big footprint. So we're not.
you're not really doing anything different to adjust to the new world order. I think that the new world order is making uh, making us a more valuable resource than we were before because the focus is more on the things that we're trying to do. Not that the United States government is making them a more valuable resource, but the New World Order is making SEAL teams a more valuable resource. Right out of the horse's mouth. So don't call me anymore and tell me I'm full of crap when I tell you there's a New World Order. You're brain dead. I'm alive. I'm real. I'm free. I can think. Wars may be in Latin America and Central America uh, on the river stopping drug traffic. They may have to adopt to that. The United States is attempting to strategically reprioritize its military and national intelligence focus as a response to the wave of religious, state, and criminal terrorism throughout the world. Notice religious, state, and criminal terrorism. Not enemies of the United States of America. Not foreign countries. Not someone declaring war upon the United States of America. Let me, uh, let me play that again for you. Have to adopt to that. The United States is attempting to strategically reprioritize its military and national intelligence focus as a response to the wave of religious, state, and criminal terrorism throughout the world. In other words, ladies and gentlemen, the United States military forces are now the police force of the world. It has nothing to do with military anymore. You think, <laughs> if you think things are bad, you haven't even a slightest clue as to how bad they really are. The kinds of terrorist groups that we're seeing emerge today, they are engaged in criminal activity, but they are also engaged in, in a kind of asymmetrical warfare against American interests. Since when does the United States military go after criminals? Huh? 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 I'm knowing full well, particularly those that represent the world states, that they can't confront us in a conventional sense. They're looking for ways to get at our people in unconventional ways. And that's why special operations forces, particularly the Navy SEALs, are adept and available for that kind of un unconventional threat. Counter-drug operations have become an important special operations mission throughout South America. You mean law enforcement mission, don't you? Stop using these weird, stupid acronyms. I mean, the American people understand that drug enforcement is law enforcement. It's not military. Anything. Criminal groups inside Colombia, Peru, and Bolivia routinely smuggle hundreds of tons of cocaine a year to the United States. And there he says it, criminal groups in those countries that he named not military forces declaring war upon the United States of America. You better wake up, people. You are just about a heartbeat away from enslavement under a totalitarian socialist New World Order. As we operate today and as, as we prepare for the future, as, as boundaries melt and we're dealing more and more with transnational threats, I think that increasingly special operations forces will be operating in what I would call the scene between war and crime. And there you have it, as boundaries melt, as the new world order comes together, as world government becomes fact, they're going to be operating between what? Well, let's hear it again. Here we United go. States. As we operate today and as, as we prepare for the future, as, as boundaries melt, and we're dealing more and more with transnational threats, I think that increasingly special operations forces will be operating in what I would call the scene between war and crime. Yes, it's a combat sort of thing. Yes, we could obviously bring military capabilities to bear on the problem, but do we as a country 
want to declare war with the military might that we have on what is uh, what is perceived at this point in time as a civilian problem. As soon as you start to interject a military solution on a civilian situation, you raise all kinds of issues that we have not yet dealt with. But you're going to have to deal with them. You're going to have to deal with me and a lot of other Americans that aren't going to accept your bullshit. You are absolutely committing treasonous acts against the Constitution for the United States of America and against the citizens of this nation. We need to be careful before we decide to go in that direction. Over two-thirds of the world's population and economic infrastructure is located within 300 miles of the coastline. Using small teams of boats and men, riverine warfare is a potential battleground for clandestine SEAL-type operations. However, the political risks are many, the results unpredictable. The buzzword is low-intensity conflicts, uh, or conflicts other than war. These are wars that are short of actual shooting battles, where you want to send a small, deniable group in to affect some type of outcome. They're that means, folks, unconstitutional, unlawful, illegal, deniable, is the key word there. You see, if it was lawful, if it was constitutional, if it was legal, they would not have to deny it. Deniable is exactly what Ollie North and Admiral Poindexter said over and 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 over again in the Iran-Contra hearings debate within the Pentagon over this because the view there, and it was expressed by Colin Powell, the former Joint Chiefs of Staff, is that if the conflict was not worth enough to go in openly, then it may not be worth enough to go in covertly. And I say, if it's not worth going in under the law, then it cannot be done at all because anything else is unconstitutional, unlawful, illegal. But that's what they do every day. You see, that's what's called deniable action. Small, low-intensity conflicts become high-intensity ones very, very quickly. Potential SEAL missions have always involved political risk. Secrecy of movement is vital. Through constant training, SEALs and special boat units work to perfect insertion and extraction techniques, waiting for a call that may never come. You need to take an overview of what we're trying to accomplish in the counter-drug situation. Do we want to interdict this five or ten kilos of coke? Do we want to interdict those couple of hundred pounds of marijuana? What's, what's the real role? My answer to that, those first couple of questions, is probably not. We need to get at the source, and we need to get at the people who are organizing and who are paying the people to grow the marijuana and process the coke. Hey, gee, guy, that's your boss. You're talking about taking down your own boss, and you don't even know it. I mean, you've been doing this for years, the whole legal instrument of the United States, the whole DEA, all the law enforcement agencies, all the city cops, everybody's trying to get at the source of the drugs and stop it. But not one single one of them has ever even come close or been able to do it. He's talking about taking down his own boss. And he's not going to be able to do that either. There's an example to be made, and somebody wants to use the best forces that are available. Again, we have to go to a much higher level uh, that's going to authorize the use of American military in that role. The SEAL reputation for undertaking risky missions can be a double-edged sword. Their tactics of sabotage and hit-and-run ambush are not always accepted as the American way to do battle. You go in and neutralize the target. That's the accepted politically correct word or terminology to, to use in this day and age. Well, when you say that, everybody knows what we're going to do. 
And to neutralize that target, you have in fact killed everybody within sight of hearing. Now, did you all hear that? Did you understand what he said? The United States government has a policy, they say to the public, that we don't, we don't do assassinations. Well, you just heard from the mouth of the Master Chief Petty Officer of the SEAL teams of the United States of America saying that that is exactly what they do. We do train a lot, and uh, the day does kind of drag out sometimes, and, and training does get kind of boring once you've done it over and over and over the same thing. But it's all about, you know, that, that piping. It's all about waiting to go. And if you're lucky enough to be there when your number gets called, well, get on you. And that's what everybody's waiting for. You heard how many military officers tell you that the military trains and trains and trains for combat, hoping that it never happens? And I've told you on this broadcast many times, on many different broadcasts over the years, that that's a lie. Anybody who trains and trains and trains to do something is left praying and praying and praying that they get to actually carry it out. And this man just confirmed it. The military, if it cannot find a conflict to enter into, will create one. The military without conflicts to enter into is a useless organization. And military officers and military personnel who cannot find conflicts to fulfill their mission will soon find themselves out of a job. Therefore, the military is a self-fulfilling prophecy. Everybody here wants to do the same thing. Everybody here looks forward to going to combat. And that's the kind of people that I want to be around, and that's the kind of people that SEALs are. That's a United States SEAL team member, a leader of a SEAL team platoon, an officer telling you that he is looking forward to, can't wait to go out and kill people. <laughs> It's very difficult to put what we do in a context that somebody who doesn't do it will understand. The context we do those things in is in defense of this country, in defense of this democracy. We do it at the request, only at the request and direction of the civilian leadership. Now, there you have it, folks. He said that what they do is not in defense of freedom. He said it. You just heard it. He said it's not in defense of freedom. It is not in defense of this country. I'm going to play that again for you. He just admitted it's not in the defense of freedom. It is not in the defense of this country. And he put it sort of kindly. said, it's on request of the leaders of this country. The truth is, it's on direct order of only, only, nobody else, only the President of the United States of America. And at this time, that's William Jefferson Clinton. Listen to this again. I want to be around, and that's the kind of people who seals up. <laughs> It's very difficult to put what we do in a context that somebody who doesn't do it will understand. The context we do those things in is in defense of this country, in defense of this democracy. We do it at the request, only at the request and direction of the civilian leadership. Call that a commercial if you will. SEAL strategy for victory is based on the principles of an uncomplicated plan and keeping movements concealed. To gain speed on target, full-scale dress rehearsals are conducted whenever possible. To put yourself at risk unnecessarily is not what we're looking for. We're not looking for that guy at all because he jeopardizes everyone. We want that professional, very focused individual that will go in harm's way in a heartbeat. If you weren't, he'd be like any other organization where it's just too bad. Okay, I lost. Too bad. That's no way to be. You'll, you'll never win that way. And when you're trying to win, I mean, you're winning with your life sometimes. Despite the monotony that inevitably comes from the relentless training schedule they follow, 
SEALs never stray far from their ultimate hope, to be called upon to go to war. Well, hell yeah. I think about it all the time. I mean, this is a G.I. Jane. This is the real deal. We're here to fight. We've come down here to train these guys and to get a little bit more of, of training for ourselves. But the bottom line is it's all about combat. It's all about going. Most weapons used by a SEAL platoon are modified to fit personal requirements for weight and dependability. The M60 is normally a crew surf weapon, but in a SEAL platoon, it is carried by one man. The platoon life of the M60 gunner is burdened by the extra 35 to 45 pounds of weapon and ammunition he must carry. I did five platoons carrying an M60, and it's, it's not fun. The platoon can only move as fast as its slowest man. Your slowest man is always your 60 gunner, period. And people are like, come on, dude. Let's move, all right? You know, they're mad at you. It takes you longer to get up a cliff. It takes you longer to get across the river. But when you start rocking and rolling out there, they love you. And the other guys, they know there's a wall of lead out there. There's that sound that keeps the enemy's head down, and they can concentrate on picking the guys off. When you're in a combat role, things are in the suit. Things are happening pretty quick. The decision-making process is... Uh, you, you usually will have about a second, second and a half maybe to make a decision to move on. A person that cannot do that, he doesn't have much of a chance for survival and the men that are looking to him for that decisiveness, that leadership, they don't have much of a chance to. SEAL Special Operations, supported by the U.S. government, often require clandestine tactics. The strict rules of engagement for these missions and the complexities they pose for the troops involved are the key to understanding the political difficulties inherent in low-intensity conflicts. Certainly there's one of perspective. Doctrinal definitions of high-intensity, mid-intensity, and low-intensity on the battlefield. But I would submit to you, if you're the soldier, sailor, airman, marine in the foxhole and they're shooting at you, it is high-intensity. You just heard a bullshit uh, recitation of why something unlawful should be considered uh, okay by the American people. Folks, you better learn about these uh, word twisters, definition uh, benders, and the, uh, the, the policy of political correct thinking. There's only one law, the Constitution for the United States of America. Anything that deviates from it is unconstitutional, unlawful, illegal, wrong. The uh, difference today, of course, are these small pockets of terrorism that exist uh, in these little enclaves don't warrant a full frontal assault, if you will, of all the national resources in our arsenal. So therefore, we commit small, highly trained units with exacting skills. The operations tend to be more precise, more precision-oriented. U.S. Navy SEALs operate on orders frequently shaped by political military considerations at the highest level. As a result, they are often propelled into the gray area between diplomacy and covert operations. Which means unlawful, unconstitutional, illegal activity again. Their directions can only come from the president. One of these days, if you wake up one morning and find that I've been murdered, it might be that I was murdered by these guys, sent out by a president who has already named me in a White House memo as the most dangerous radio host in America. For SEALs, the only concern is maintaining their edge, keeping one foot in the water and one foot on the beach. But yeah, that is the, the core of what, what being a seal is. Not an irresponsible slaughtering people or uh, breaking things that, uh, because you like to see things blow up, but doing this discipline in carrying out the military and foreign policy of the United States, doing what the president wants them to do. Yep, doing what the president wants them to do. But for the rest of that, not doing it because they like to see things blown up and get broken? Bullshit. That's exactly why they're there. They love it. They can't wait. You already heard it. Most SEAL operators view the media with suspicion. In the age of information, there is an inherent uneasiness between SEALs 
and anyone they suspect might reveal their mission capabilities to the outside world. That is really clear! The best rumors started about SEAL Team have been started by people who were never in SEAL Team who tell people they are SEALs. Demo Team in! The best stories that have ever come out are coming up from people who have never even met a SEAL, let alone uh, had anything to do with SEAL Team. Most of us just go along with it and laugh, you know, because, yeah, that's a good story. <laughs> we can do that. <laughs> the best way of putting it is, we're not that good. It's just everybody else sucks. And that's the end of it, folks. And all you militia members out there, listen to me very carefully. Everything that you ever read about SEALs, by their own admission, is not written by SEALs, is not said by SEALs, does not come from SEALs. And did you hear what he said? Listen to me very carefully. He said, we're not that good, it's just that everybody else sucks. And my advice to you is don't suck. Become as good or better. Become as good or better. They are deployed on behalf of the New World Order. We are the enemies of the New World Order, which means sooner or later you may face these men in the field. And if you're not as good or better, they will kill you without quarter, by their own admission, you will have no chance. Your mission, when you meet them in the field, is to kill them first. The phones are open, 520-333-4578. We've only got a few minutes, so if you want to call in, you better do it really quick. What do you think about what you just heard on this broadcast. This is real radio. You don't need all of these people who make things up and lie and stretch the facts. The facts, the real facts, are bad enough. Good evening. You're on the air. Yes, Bill. That was an excellent program you did, one of your classics. I'm glad you ripped that program a new butthole because if I had caught that on the tube, I would have been pulling my hair out with that propaganda. Well, you know what's really sad? Most people would not even have understood any of this if it had not been explained to them. You're absolutely right. It was a fluff piece, pop, a piece of propaganda, and you really cut it a new butthole. Well, good. And, uh, I just told Bill, I, I'm, I'm kind of with you. I think that someday there will be a civil war in this country. It's not going to be like the last civil war, the North, the North versus the South. And I just hope that when this civil war breaks out, we have enough people in the military that realize how they've been duped, and they could, you know, join our side against, you know, fighting this new world order. I'm glad you said that, because these SEAL Team members are not really the enemy. They really believe they're doing the right thing, and if they could really, really be shown the overall picture and how they're being misused, they would be on our side, because I can guarantee you there are people just like me who joined the military to fight for right, to fight for the Constitution, to fight for this country, not for some new world order. And I hope there's a lot of retired SEALs that might, you know, this is a classic program. I hope I hope you play this again. I hope there's retired SEALs that might be hearing this, that might uh, have some polls to say so. I, I missed the first few minutes, Bill. What was the name of that program and where did it originally air? It's called United States Navy SEALs in Harm's Way, and it aired Sunday on the Discovery Channel. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm glad you really you really did what you did because I, I would have been mad as hell just hearing all that nonsense because I, I, I agree with everything you said on this program tonight. Got to let some more people in. Thank you, Bill. Thanks for calling. 520-333-4578 is the number. We don't have much time. If you want to get your say-so in here, you better do it right this minute. I mean, like right now because uh, we're coming up against the wall. 520 Seven eight is the number. What did you think about what you just heard? Good evening. You're on the air. Yeah, Bill. Yes. You're at your best when you teach like this. Excellent. Well, I'm trying to be. Thank you. Have a good night. Uh, thanks for calling. Five two zero three 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 four five seven eight. We still have some time. If you want to get your two cents in here? Get it in right now. And for all you other radio talk show hosts that think you have to stretch things out to a mile that doesn't exist, or you have to invent things, or you have to make things up, or you have to sensationalize or drive people to hysteria, you're wrong. 
and you're not going to last. Good evening. You're on the air. Bill, how do how do you figure they're going to take the Navy SEALs and actually put them in against us on this in the civil war that you expect coming? Simple. Out? They'll just name you as a terrorist. Right. They will uh, draw up an operational plan for them to go and get you, and they will do it. But this is going to be. They don't know you. They don't know you. If they're told that you're a terrorist, so they, they will it. believe their leadership, right. and they will go take you out. But are they going to do it secretly, or is it going to be Absolutely next? secretly. Okay. That's so how they operate. They never operate All in right, public. All right, they may take out, maybe they want to come after you secretly, because they don't They'll want to They'll come after right. whoever their target is secretly. They have always done so. Have you, you read in the, in the newspaper about anything the SEALs ever do? Right, you're right. Everything they ever do is secretly. Right, until we see it on the TV, right? You don't ever see it on the TV. You never see and have never seen anything the SEALs have ever done on the TV, except in Granada when they lost several SEALs because they never reached their objective. They were killed in the sea. Very good. Hey, uh, you going to have a tape of this? This is an excellent tape. Yeah. You Very can... good, Bill. Thanks. I'll let somebody else go. You're on. welcome. Well, that's it, folks. We're out of time. Good night. God bless each and every single one of you. This is Real Radio. Not making up the fact. Oh, not making up. The Russians are going to nuke us. The Russians are going to nuke us. All of a sudden, in the middle of the night, there's a loud knock on your door. Hey, honey. Something's not right. And I'm from the IRS with a power to tax. If you've got a complaint, <laughs> send us a fax. Get out of this house. Surrender your guns. Give me your gold. You better obey if you want to grow old. That's the good step and do what you're told. Hillary Shalala, Reno Janet Dyke, reading the words of General Albert Pike, demonic founder of the Ku Klux Klan, engineer of the Masonic Master Plan. Pike said, Lucifer is God across this land. And Clinton saying, take the mark in your right hand. While we're all dancing to the drums of the fourth right, Clinton's preparing us for another huge tax hike. Order out of chaos. Order out of chaos, depression, inflation, create the panic, then rape the nation. Order out of chaos. Crisis creation. Incite black and white program agitation. Don't resist. You're surrounded by the UN in white and blue, the ATF, the men in black, of the one world order. But, but it's, it's not, not new. new. Iron Mountain, computer beast, and cattle mutilations. Black projects, UFOs, and weird genetic combinations. The Nazi doctors didn't die. Come on, get hip. They came here with the OSS through Operation Paperclip. National ID, debit card? Yeah. Vaccination biochip, milk carton kits, genetic engineering. Clinton says her health plans for you and your own good. Sure. And Adolf Hitler's Robin Hood. Masonic mind manipulation. Inciting riots, it's crisis creation. Bioship implantation. Vaccinate your kid for UN identification. This is a test for all of us. So I have today just one simple request. A comprehensive package of health care benefits that are always there and that can never be taken away. Never be taken away. Never be taken away. Atmospheric social illusion. Media hype. Planned confusion. Masonic religion, it's a liar. Not your praying for a Luciferian Messiah.
The Illuminati thinks that they're enlightened, that they're to be the gods of Earth, born of incest from the sons of Satan and their sisters in satanic birth. Hidden Agenda, Kissinger, Nixon, Ford, and Bill. While your kids out back smoking crack for some cheap thrill. They've numbed us down and dumbed us down with fluoride TV drugs, the NEA, and public schools. They've taken your brightest and our best and made them public fools. With managed media, brain bending lies and stealth, the banksters stole your wealth. Johnson, Bush, Carter, Reagan, Gore, and Dan. They've all been pushing pipes beside Master Plan. Order. Rhodes Scholar Oration. Clinton speaks, then rapes the nation. Order. Luciferian subjugation. New World Order. Illuminati coronation. Mass media grand ovation. Orders of the quest. Think they're superior. They think that they're the best. And you're inferior, you little pest. Skull and Bones, Scroll and Key, Knights Templar, Harvard University. They're the Faustian Fraternity. Knights of the Golden Circle, Ancient Order of the Rosen Cross, CFR Albatross. In both parties, <laughs> Rockefeller's boss. MK Ultra, ISA from the OSS to the CIA. Mass murder is the game they play. Galileo, NASA, Jupiter, Plutonium 2000, Dual Sun. They'll call it Lucifer for fun. Pyramid Giza, Hitler called it the Luciferian Millennium. A thousand points of light. Love of Rome, Thunderdome, Isis, Horus, Lucifer's Trust. If the UN lives, y'all go bust. Wake up stupid and read the scoop. Mullen, Sutton, Griffin, and tune in to Coop. Kong, Ron, Karano, Kisei. Bohemian Grove, Beverly Hall, Lord Betraya, they want it all. <laughs> yeah, they want it all! Kissinger, Ginrich, Army, Buckley, Dole, New World Order, Authoritarian Control. Counterfeits! 